run with a former Tar Heel, TJ Logan. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. Brings up second and eight. to throw. McKee. The open man is Westbrook. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They'll run on first down. Logan. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. To midfield, let's say, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. down. It's Logan. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. Seemed like a couple sets of eyes were on the quarterback, so he decided, hey, I'm going to hand this off. Got a good gain out of it. And you know you need good blocking up front in order to gain yardage, but every one of these RPOs, if you do it right and they look the same, whether it's handed off inside or the quarterback keeps it, that allows you to fool the defense so often. And in this case, fooled them with the inside run. They'll run on first down. Logan. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback. And no better way to do it to establish the running game early. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll run it here with Logan. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? It always helps when you get great run support from your safeties. And when you get one who can actually read the play and get upfield and shut it down before it gets going, it's exactly what you're looking for. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. From the gun, McKee got his man complete over the middle. That's Logan. And he is going to get the first down as he covers up after a pretty good shot there. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and ten. This is Logan. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. When you're lateral to the line of scrimmage, linebackers keep those shoulders square so they can go up and down. But when it's time to go, turn your shoulders just like a running back. Get through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. 
flush to his right. He's going to take off with it. Now the ball comes loose. And this is going to get out of bounds. So they will gain a bit of yardage on the play, actually. And they'll hold on to the football as well. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three. But now it's third down. to throw. McKee. And that'll bring up fourth down as his Cincy defense stands up on third. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. And Lambeau will put this one through. Not a touchdown, obviously, but playoffs, you're on the road. At least you put something on the board. I would agree with that totally. You're not exactly sending a message to the opposition, but you are letting them know that you came to play. Josh Lambeau to kick off for Jacksonville. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. And this will make it into the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially. So a net gain of one there. Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 26. A first carry for the former Oklahoma Sooner, Joe Mixon. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. A, gain of a quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. And he will finally be taken out of bounds. A big play there on the catch and run. 46 yards. At the 13-yard line. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and ten as they've got things rolling on this drive. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. From the thirteen, now they work on first and ten. Now Joe Mixon. 
And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. The excellent play last time is followed by a much more routine gain of three. Brings up second and seven. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They'll run here with Mixon. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. gain on the play. Brings up third down and seven. Play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. A great job there by this defense. They give up the long drive, but in the end, it looks like they'll force a field goal attempt. yard attempt. And the 10-year back knocks it through the goalpost, and that will tie us at 3-3. So a return of serve, so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that. Go a little tennis on me. I know huh? you. You like to mix it up I with like sports. That. They, yeah. crack, they crack a forehand back out and they get a backhand. What was the serve? It, what was the return on? It was a backhand. I like a that. really one. good backhand. Get some nice top spin on the a little, little bit. bit. A little I bit. love it. Almost yeah. a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. At the run, 27 yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. To throw on second down. McKee forced out to his left. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. On third down, McKee. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Excellent play there on third down. Give them 25 yards. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They run with Logan, and he stopped immediately there. Big Geno Atkins there to bring him down. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. Actually broke that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they've wanted to, but I think we'll see more of as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Off play action. McKee rolling to his right. Looking long for Westbrook. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. D.D. Westbrook. D.D. Westbrook. 44 yards. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. Boy, that route is really tough to cover because if they're running it correctly, you think it's really going to be a slam. Yeah, well, we talk all the time about how it's tough to execute offensively, but you're saying, don't forget, it's tough to cover for the defense, too. Yeah, the number one thing that you're taught is to not get caught inside or get beat inside. So you guard that a little bit more. So that gives you a little bit more space to operate outside if you start your move initially inside if you're a receiver. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. 25-yard line.
The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. On second down, Burrow. Open man is Higgins. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Coming up at the half, we remind you that we're going to do what we've done all year. We'll get you down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. Coach will have the lowdown of what's going on here in this wild card weekend as we begin the road to the upcoming Super Bowl. And now here's a deep shot that's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It was third and short, and they go flying past the marker for a gain of nearly 30 yards. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Escaping the pressure right. And his pass incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Let's go, defense. Again, it's Burrow. Flushed out right. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Throwing back across his body. Picked off at the 19. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. I think that interception happened for two reasons. Quarterback gets outside the pocket and panics a little bit, and receiver doesn't make sure he's absolutely in an open spot. So there's a guy lurking, took the ball from yeah, him. Yeah, so don't wave your arms, right, as a receiver if you're not wide open. Got to know that you're open. Otherwise, just don't do it. On first down, it's Logan. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Jesse Bates. Ten yards on the pickup. It's second and inches at the 38-yard line. That one complete. He finds Shark. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Seven yards there and a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And it's intercepted at the goal line. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. That was just one of those interceptions from our perspective here. We got a good view at the 50-yard line mid-level that quarterback and receiver were not on the same page. Just by his reaction, I'm talking about the quarterback, he expected something different from his receiver, whether he expected him to break in, out, deeper, shorter. They'll determine that on the sideline. But bottom line, you could see that he thought he'd be in a different spot except the defender was not his intended target. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. All right, I need you to check my eyes here. This entire unit defensively, I think, has looked really strong in the first half, especially in the secondary. They've been cohesive, fast to the football. We just saw another example arriving there to help knock that one away. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Burrow will throw. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one.
So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. Burrow looking to pass. Got a man, it's Ross, complete. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. His throw caught right around the six. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. A very solid gain of 27. First and goal at the six yard line. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. To the air again, Burrow. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the former Pitt Panther, was the target. But it'll be second and goal. Second and goal. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Mixon. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Joe Mixon in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Randy Bullock. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. That ties the game at 10. as the kick's away. Short, short kick. One of the up middle take it now. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. That's so we're at halftime of this AFC wild card matchup. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Lambeau to kick off for Jacksonville. Both teams try to avoid being one and done in these playoffs as we start the second half of this AFC wild card game. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. At their own 19 yard line.
The Bengals drive about to get going. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides try to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Two yards the loss, second and 12. 17 yard line. Now Burrow to throw on second down. Going deep downfield for Ross. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. On third down, Nixon, and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, a nice job defensively, and it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. The Bengals bring out their punter now, and surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Kicks away as he angles this one for the sideline. And the punt goes out of bounds. Where will they put it? They'll put it just inside the 45-yard line. 41-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. The defense was ready for the run pass option, diagnosed it perfectly. Not only did they stack him up at the point of attack, but he was met by a host of light-colored jerseys. Three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Back to throw. McKee. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Operating from the gun, McKee. Buying time to his left. Now he'll square up and throw deep left sideline. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. They've been trying and trying, but they haven't sacked him yet. He's been able to get away and make plays. Tried to make another one downfield right there, but to no avail. They'll have to keep up the pursuit, though, and not let him get hot. The Bengals take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? And a lot of the guys will go. He's got a man complete. And all the way down to the 37. A big play there for the Bengals. 41 yards. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. 
Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Boyd. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 24 yards the game there. Another first down as well. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Clyde keeps moving. Eluding the pressure right. And this is incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Third quarter, wild card round. Thanks for being along for the playoff ride with us. Here's second and ten. Now mix it. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. A two-yard pickup makes it third and eight. On third down, Burrow. Flush to his right. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here, and the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. On the run, it's Mixon. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Brings up second and goal at the Jaguars' three-yard line. Here's a run with Mixon. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. This is a big play in this wild card matchup, facing third and goal. On the ground, Geis. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. A field goal would break the tie, but look at this. Instead, they're going to go for it on fourth and goal. They'll try and throw forward with Burrow. And that is going to be incomplete. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Jaguars are able to come up with a goal line stand. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. So they got some pressure, maybe hoping to get a safety, and they get roughing the passer. And gave up a pass completion as well. Nothing really went right on that play for them. So now a fresh set of downs, first and ten after roughing the passer. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Now a loose football, the ball comes out. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. From the shotgun now, here's an inside game. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, 
the guys who just gave up that play. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. A good comeback there after the penalty. Nine yards, and it's second and six. yard line. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. The ball resting on the 20. Here's second and six. A first carry now for Kofrani Muhammad. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And it brings up third down. One quarter remains for the right to survive round one here in the AFC. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Looking to throw. McKee escaping the pressure right. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. They'll run on first down. Logan. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Brings up second and nine at the 48-yard line. They run again with Logan. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. And it's third down. From the gun, McKee flushed out right. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A first down and then some. Give him 29 yards. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 13-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Logan. And here he'll get it down to the seven. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. At the seven-yard line. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. On the carry, it's Muhammad. And the Jags are going to be set up with a first and goal. He couldn't quite reach the chalk, but they'll have it at the one-yard line. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. They go again with Muhammad, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. Tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third and goal. Back to throw. McKee steps away to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. The decision to tuck and run gets him free, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. And goal at the one yard line. And no movement for the field goal unit to break this tie. They're going to go for this thing. Fourth and goal. Here we go. They'll go with a keeper. 
Try to wedge his way in there. No signal. I don't think he got there. He did it. They try the sneak, but not enough push. He doesn't get in. And the Bengals are going to get the football back. The Bengals drive about to get going. And it's all on the line now. All even in this wild card matchup. Maybe their most important drive of the season. Coming up right now here first and 10. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this tie. On second down, here's Burrow. Going deep downfield for Ross. And got his man complete. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. John Ross taking it goal line to goal line, 100 yards. And the Bengals have broken our tie as they take the lead. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. Makes the score, Bengals 17, Jaguars 10. That is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. At their own 19-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And last time, they had it fourth and goal. Rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind and try to put together another drive. Hey, a simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time, they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. They'll keep it on the ground. Logan. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They'll look to throw. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. There he goes right side. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six for a Bengals TD. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Now Bullock to add the extra point. PAT up and good, but hold on a second. There is a flag. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And that's fielded on the back line of the end zone. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line.
Throwing after the interception. McKee dancing to his left. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. To throw again. McKee eluding the pressure right. That's complete to his speedy wideout, Goodwin. And all the way inside the 35 before he goes out of bounds. It's a big play for the Jaguars. 44 yards. First down, McKee, and he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. from the gun. McKee, he's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. McKee Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Throwing on third and long. McKee. This is caught inside the 15. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle, but they allow the conversion. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first, and this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Jesse Bates, and he is going to be stopped on the return at his own three-yard line. Intercepted. The Bengals take over first and 10 at their own three-yard line. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. A little clock management 101. Once again, they run with Mixon, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Oh, wait, hold everything. A timeout has been called. Seemingly silly with one second remaining in this game. Third down, Mixon. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. Today's final score, Bengals. Their season ends here, a tough way to go out. And the goal was to not just get to the wild card. Before they learn how to win them. In I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been right here.